Hey guys, Michael here. Today, Coleman and I are going to take you through a really good sniper loadout that we have. Um, we'd recommend it to a lot of people. It's geared to more and more intermediate to advanced players, but it has a lot of benefits for the um, beginner too as well because it's relatively cheap compared to other airsoft loadouts. Um, it's a very versatile loadout. You can stay back and snipe lots, but you can also move up and get into the action. So we'll explain a bit more about that later. The first thing we're going to start with is the clothing and the base layer. Obviously the clothing and the base layer are very important because you need to be comfortable. When you're in long scenario type games, you don't want to be sweating tons and itching and scratching and you know, that's just no fun. So underneath his BDUs, Coleman is wearing a Under Armour base layer. Long sleeve or a t-shirt, doesn't really matter as long as that's a good quality material that's going to wick away the sweat. Over top of that is his CAD pad BDUs. They're a matching color, cost about 120 bucks. Um, you can get them at any store that sells paintball gear, airsoft gear, um, and we also found that military surplus stores were a really good place to buy them too. Um, they come with lots of storage, lots of pockets, as well as they give you a decent amount of protection from you know anything that you're going to be crawling on or of course BBs too. The next thing is his mask. This is a standard uh, V-Force grill mask, uh, very comfortable with a no fog lens, so it's a really good mask for any type of player and um, well worth the investment. Next we're going to talk about his guns. Obviously the most important part of any airsoft loadout is the guns. So the first one we're going to show you here that Coleman has is the UTG MK96 sniper rifle. This is an amazing quality sniper rifle. Right out of the box it shoots 500 feet per second with all of its stock parts. So obviously it doesn't need to be upgraded. It's very rugged. Coleman's had it for an entire season with no problems as long as it's maintained carefully and regularly. The next thing we're going to talk about is the scope. The scope's mounted on the gun. It's a 3x9, 50mm Swiss Arm scope. It's not a very high zoom scope, but then again, you don't need a very high zoom scope when you're sniping. The most important thing is you have a scope that's um, rugged. It's not going to break on you. It's not going to scratch or get too dirty when you're out in the field. The next thing we need to talk about is Coleman's pistol. Pistols are so important when you're in sniping class, both for personal defense, if you get caught flanked, or if you need to move up and put pressure on the team, you need something that's semi-automatic or automatic. So this one right here is a KJW Glock 23. It's got a plastic slide and a threaded barrel. The plastic slide is very realistic, and it's also much cheaper than the metal slide. So the metal slide really doesn't have any benefit, and we would recommend that you go with a plastic slide when purchasing a pistol. It has a 16 round mag that's metal and it's very good because it will have a high round capacity for most pistols and keep you well defended. The next thing we got to talk about is the utilities. Another really important factor in an airsoft loadout is your utilities. You need to have something that will carry all your stuff and be comfortable at the same time. Right now Coleman is wearing an OE Tech Assault Backpack. A really important feature of the backpack is the stuff that's on the front. It has a mole assault waist belt as well as straps on the shoulders. On the waist belt there's a holster for his pistol as well as spot for an extra mag. Next to the extra mags is his utility knife. This is really important because you need a utility tool or knife anytime you're out in the field. This is good for if you have to do some repairs, if you need to clear some bushes or other stuff around you and it's just good to have it on you. Next thing is Coleman's cold steel training knife. We picked this up from a local military surplus store, but you could probably also find this at paintball or airsoft stores. This is really good for if you get up and close and you want to get a cool knife kill. Um, and let's be honest, it just looks really badass. The next thing is Coleman's Motorola radio. This is on his chest strap. It's just a standard shortwave radio with a range of 40 kilometers but it's really important for keeping in contact with your other team members. Whether you're at the back or coming up, they need to know where you are. You can also hook it up to a headset if need be, but we just use it with our hands. The next thing we're going to talk about is what's inside the backpack. A few key things that we forgot to mention earlier were Coleman's EOTech hard knuckle gloves. Um, they're made of Kevlar and they're really important because you need to keep your hands safe. You don't want to get scratches, you want to get cuts, and the hard knuckles do a really good job protecting you from that while still giving you good finger mobility when you're sniping. The other thing we've got to talk about 
was the extra storage for his mags. Coleman has three 30 round mags placed in pockets on his BDUs that are in really good position for him to do speed reloader. Also in his pockets is the kill rag. Um, for those of you who are sort of new to airsoft, a kill rag is just a fluorescent rag that you hold in the air after you get hit so you don't keep getting shot after you're out. Now onto his backpack. Um, backpacks are really important for any loadout because you need to have storage for the things you need that you can't carry on you. Um, like I said, this is an OE Tech assault backpack with mole webbing on the outside. So you can also attach other things to it if you need more storage. Coleman's gonna start pulling out the contents of the backpack and I'll explain it as he does so. First thing he's pulling out is our Claymore. Um, this is a homemade Claymore, but it's really important for protecting your back when you're sniping. Um, it's set up with a trip wire placed in the ground and when it's tripped, it releases a hail of BBs that will get out your opponent and keep you from getting snuck up on. It also has protective tabs on the bottom spikes to keep it from puncturing your backpack as they're quite sharp. The next thing here is the hydration bladder. This is an OE Tech Assault hydration bladder that carries up to two liters. Um, it's really important because hydration is so key when you're in a scenario game. If you're out there for long hours, you need to be drinking lots of water and this keeps you well hydrated. The next thing we store is the speed loader. This is for reloading your mags for a sniper and it's really important because if you don't have a speed loader, you have to put in the BBs one by one and it is the most painful and annoying experience ever. So this is really key for any sniper loadout. Our next thing here is our BBs. We like to keep our BBs in bags because if you have them in plastic containers, they can rattle around lots and make lots of noise. So the bags keep them fairly silent. We have two marked bags one for 0.2 BBs that are for the pistol, and another for 0.3 BBs for the sniper. Next thing we have here is a can of green gas. This is for reloading the green gas canister in our pistol and keeping it firing. Also, this is our tripwire kit for the Claymore. Um, it's in a little bag because it keeps it from getting, you know, squished in your backpack and obviously that's an important part of the Claymore set. Next thing here is we have some bug lotion just to keep the mosquitoes <laughs> away. Sorry. You know, yeah. no one likes to get bugged by mosquitoes and so we always keep it on us. Also here is some powder. Um, this is kind of just for show, but we put the powder in the Claymore so that when it explodes, it's really visible and it's just kind of embarrassing when you get hit by our Claymore. I think this is what we load in our Claymore. They're crappy plastic BBs you can buy at like Canadian Tire or any other general store. They don't need to be any special quality when they're in the Claymore. This is the binoculars. Um, this is important when you're just observing. You don't want to have your scope, and if you're looking at your teammates, you don't want them to think you're shooting at you. So it's just nice to have some binoculars for farther distance viewing. And that's about it. So the final part of our video here is kind of tying the whole loadout together, showing you how it's going to look to have the loadout on, how to set up, and how to do a couple different positions in this loadout. So first of all, we can see Coleman's got all his gear on, he's got both his guns, and the first thing he's going to demonstrate for us is to how to go from a searching position to a sniping position once you find your perch. It is important to use your backpack as a rest because it allows you access to everything that you have stored there. Right in front of Coleman, he's got access to his radio, to his pistol, to his knife, to his hydration bladder. So it allows him to keep everything he needs um, really close to him as well as support the rifle while he's sniping. Now Coleman, do you want to show us how to go from a sniping position to an attack position with your knife and your pistol?
So this is an attack position with your pistol and your knife. Um, we like to use kind of the tactical grip. If you've ever played the Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, you know what we're talking about. Um, it's nice because it allows you to get up and close with the knife kills and be quick, but you also have your pistol in your dominant hand for firing off as much as you need. So yeah, so that's the pretty much the whole shebang of our loadout. And we'd really appreciate if you like this video, share it, comment on it, and show your friends. We'll be doing more in the future. So thanks for watching and, you know, all the luck in your airsoft adventures.